Hey Eurovision fans, we have the results of the first semi-final of Melody Grand Prix, Norway's national final. We're going to talk about the three who didn't qualify, the three who did qualify, and if any of them have a chance in the final. So let's kick in. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst, and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision. Oh, There's a terrible click. You can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. Okay, so I was actually planning to not do this video because I'm so busy right now. There's so many national final videos I have to do. And national final videos take a lot longer than other videos because of copyright and the amount of quantity of songs. But then I realized that actually videos like this are way, 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 way quicker to do because I don't have any copyright. I'm not showing any music in this video. So actually cutting out the easiest thing doesn't make any sense. And I really like doing these um, post-mortem analysis videos anyway. So. I'm gonna try and keep it short and sweet so I can get this uploaded quite quickly. The final happened last Saturday. We had six acts. Mathilde, Frederick, Mira, Goth Minister, Ingrid Yasmin, and Margaret Berger. So let's first talk about the three people who qualified. So the first qualifier was Ingrid Yasmin with her song Aya, which I was a big fan of. It was number two, I think, in my original reaction video to all the songs when they were released. This performance, I really liked the start. So on the start, it was kind of her doing like a mirror reflection dance to ladies uh, side of her. It looked quite cool. I thought it was like almost looking like a music video, giving me a really expensive chic vibe. As we went out into the like broader performance though. Costume wise I thought it was okay. It was kind of giving me like TLC music video for maybe like the naughties, the kind of outfits they were wearing, like the straps and the baggy pants, which is fine. That's a vibe, but it's kind of weird because the song I think is such a fusion of so many different sounds from all over the world. I was kind of hoping for something a little bit more colorful, vibrant, evocative, giving me that like mystical, mystical ethnic feel from around different places. And instead it was kind of like very white, plain music video. I wasn't mad on the costume choices. I thought they were fine, but they could have elevated the performance even more if they were like really beautiful, vibrant, or if she had some sort of reveal or something like that. Especially considering that she started the song with the bottom half of her body obscured. You know, it would have been cool if she came out and there was some sort of like cool, mini surprise, but instead it was just like trousers. <laughs> Vocally, I think she sounded good. I got the impression she was using autotune. If you know, leave a comment telling me, correcting me if that's right or wrong. I got the, I got the impression she was using it. It's a bit of a shame that we don't know who is and isn't using, using it. I'd like if they put a little like on here saying autotune. So maybe that we know who's using it so we're kind of like more informed. The biggest thing for me in this was the dance break because you know when I was reviewing the song there's very clearly an audio dance break in the actual studio version of the song. This dance break was so give me nothing girl like it was so low energy. It was like a couple of shoulders and a couple of twists. I was expecting to give us like this really hard hitting bam bam up down splits because when you write a dance break into the studio version you're kind of like okay wow I've got pretty high expectations now. So yeah I find that aspect really really disappointing. It just looked kind of a little bit lazy. The dancers around her were working kind of hard but she was just kind of it was it was a little bit giving me like princess vibes like I don't need to dance. Maybe she had an injury or something like that or she was sick and she's kind of like keeping it down but it just didn't look like a big bam dance break that I was expecting it just was like oh okay that was very underwhelming so yeah definitely room for improvement here but the song sounded good on stage it, it definitely reminds me of Andomake Ella and the fact that it's called that song was called Ella and this is called Aya we're only one letter off what is it about people with these songs not being able to stage them correctly give us more mysticism give us more magic and mystery and but still happy that you went through because I think it's a great song I get the second person to get called was Margaret Berger who we know from Eurovision 2013 when she came fourth again I thought she did really really well I think she had like one or two small vocal blips. It felt like she lost her voice at the high notes, but overall I thought vocally was very good. Again, was she using autotune? I don't know. We're gonna ask this question with every single person, but I think that generally Margaret's pretty strong vocally. Staging wise, it really reminded me of Robin Bankson. Was that 2017? Robin Bankson had an LED, which means it was 2017 because there was no LED in 2018, which means it, remi it reminded me of that. Outfit wise, this kind of like chic suit look was an interesting choice. I don't know if it really worked for me. It, it kept making me think like she'd just come from an office meeting, like straight from work into Melody Grand Prix. Maybe she did. Maybe she's running a business. And that's not what happened, I don't know. The four dancers I thought were brilliant. I really liked their choreography, giving us a little bit of ugly dancing, which I really liked. I thought some of the moves that they did were very, very, very interesting. Some of the camera angles when they were going sideways, looking down the line was cool. This move that they did where they kind of went like that, I thought 
I really, really liked the choreography. The staging was weird. It was like there were like squares on the ground, like raised squares. I didn't totally get that. And maybe just some reference that I'm missing. Overall, I thought her performance was very good. This was quite an obvious qualifier. It just had that quality. I'm not saying that I think that she's going to win the final, but it was kind of the one you're watching, like there's not really anything to fault. The song is solid. She's a solid performer. The staging is solid. Why would this not qualify? It wouldn't make sense. Happy to see her in the final. And then the third qualifier was Goth Minister. Now, this was my big surprise of the night. I thought this was brilliant. Now, when I did my review to the song, I remember enjoying it, but thinking that was maybe a little bit flat and repetitive. And I can't remember where I put it in my rankings, but I think it was around sixth or seventh around there. This performance really, really came alive because he brought a story to the stage. We had this girl playing with a doll's house, playing with a little goth minster. And I don't know why I assumed that it was a band, but it's actually just one dude who looks like, he literally looks like he's the manager at a Tesco when he's in his everyday clothes. And then all of a sudden he's this epic goth minister. Quite a transformation. I thought he sounded great. I thought he had great intensity and he kept his composure throughout the whole thing. I love this little story that was going on. It was so camp. It was like proper camp, vaudeville, horror movie, silliness, you know, full on ghoul dancing. <laughs> Everything was very camp. I really enjoyed it. And these purple colors and these like women bursting out of a purple velvet screen really really just campness maxed and I felt like the staging elevated the song because I didn't feel flat anymore it felt like the music really accompanied very well what was going on visually so I just really really liked this I was totally enthralled with the whole thing I was laughing I was rooting for him and by the end I was like this guy's got to go through so that's doing a great job with your staging in elevation and at that point I was starting to panic because there were four songs I liked in the semi-final and only three places to go through so with that in mind let's talk about the first person didn't qualify, which is Mathilde SPZ featuring Chris, Archer and Slam Dunk. I really, I really love this. I thought it was brilliant. Those opening 15 seconds where she, they did a camera trick where it looked like she was lying in a bath. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. I thought that was like really one of the cleverest things that I've ever seen in National Final for the first 10 seconds of a song. Her in the bath with her sandals by the side, getting ready to go out and then they pull it out and she's dressed up and she's going out. It makes sense. It's super, super fun and trippy. I thought that was fantastic. And then the rest of the song, yeah, there were some goofy elements to it. I understand the song is quite divisive because it's quite like, I can't remember the name of this dance. Someone someone told me in the comments the name of this type of dance. Last year, it was Yona. Yona had this type of song. They're like party starting songs or something. I can't remember the name, I'm sorry. Someone tell me again in the comments, remind me and I promise I'll learn it this time. Um, but yeah, I really like it and it does get the party started and I can see why it opened up the semi-final because of that. And then they had the bits where they're rocking out and the, the graphics came on from Guitar Hero. So yeah, that was kind of goofy, but I also thought it was fun. Overall, I thought the performance was very positive and happy and I would have liked to have seen it in the final. I felt it deserved to go in. I just think there were four songs that deserve to go through and there were only three spots and it's just as simple as that so no fault on them possibly running order affecting them we saw that fourth fifth and sixth in the running order all qualified and then the first three songs didn't could that have been a factor possibly we do know that viewing figures tend to go up more towards the end we'll have to see if that same pattern happens in the second semi-final frederick holland was another person who didn't go through he was on crutches the poor guy uh he was sitting there playing a piano look Everyone else bought at the big guns. We had so many interesting things. Margaret with her dancers, Ingrid with her kind of non-existent dance break, but she still had the cool thing with the mirror at the start. Goth minister with everything, <laughs> everything. And then, you know, you kind of had Frederick by the piano. So it's a contrast if someone's looking for something kind of more minimalist and a bit more classy. He was there to provide that, but people weren't. I think people were more interested in the entertaining stuff. And the song is fine. I think he did an okay performance. And then finally, we had Myra Hard on Fire. Yeah, same thing again. I just feel like the song is like really basic. Her staging actually looks fine. You know, some nice colors, purples and pinks. And they had some good dancing as well. But I don't know what happened here. She's a rapper. Why is she singing like a really... It feels like a Mel Fest reject song, let's be real. It's just quite plain. It's, it's a fine song. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just not doing anything it's not changing the world at all so i hope that myra comes back with a song that's a little bit more hard. just even if they'd added a rap into that song it would have just elevated so much into something that, that had more of a perspective so yeah a little bit sad about that i'm i'm pretty happy with the three that went through i would have liked to see methyl go through but then who do i take out of the three who qualified to put methyl in probably ingrid just because i thought her staging was a little bit underwhelming but i still really like ingrid anyway so i'm happy she went through so it's just the way it is i'm used 
to feeling heartbreak in MGP uh, after Freya last year and all the other songs that I've lost in various uh, seasons as well. Uh, Torn in Paradise, I lost that last year as well. So that's one of the things that I know I'm getting into when I watch MGP. There is going to be some heartbreak. I signed up for it. You sign up for the heartbreak, you sign up for the happy times, you sign up for the bad times. That's Melody Grand Prix. That should be their tagline. <laughs> you signed up for this. You signed up for this bitch. So take it, take it and leave it. Okay, overall, I thought the final was really good. I thought the staging was very entertaining. I thought the production looked more expensive than last year. Last year looked very cheap. They had a lot of budget concerns. This year it looked pretty normal to me. And there was an audience, it was a small audience, but that's fine. They made it look like there were probably more people there. I think it was like four or five lines of people max. There was a protester as well during the show, which I actually missed because I was watching it on repeat, so I was kind of skipping through the songs. But yeah, apparently the protester came on and everyone just kind of stood there and just did nothing. And then the protester politely walked off, very dignified, very polite, the whole thing. This is what happens in live TV. It's one of the risks, you know, you're gonna get protesters. protesters and I think we're probably gonna see more during the season. Okay, so that's what I thought about the first semi-final of Melody Grand Prix. I'm looking forward to the second semi-final where some of my favorites are performing next Saturday. Let me know what you thought about this semi-final in the comment section down below. Thank you so much to Christina for supporting me on Buy Me A Coffee. You can also support the channel on PayPal if you want. I'll leave links in the description. And of course, thank you to all my patrons all over the world for patronizing me. I love how patron -y you are. <laughs> if you want to patronize me, then check out patreon.com where you can get loads of cool bonuses. I'll put them somewhere that you can read. Okay. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on another Eurovision analysis video very soon. Goodbye. Blah, 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 blah.